Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to my channel. This is Temur. This is my channel, The Cloud Security Guy. And I don't know if you watched my previous video, but I covered the topic of how people can move from a software development career to a cyber security career. And I just wanted to make this video as a continuation of that. This continues that topic. And I want to cover a question which gets asked a lot by people who are moving into cyber security and especially cloud security, which is my area. Uh, in case you are not aware, I am a senior security consultant at Amazon Web Services. So cloud security is pretty much what I do uh, like throughout my nine to five. That's pretty much my focus, which is cloud security. And the key question I get asked is, do you need to know coding in cloud security? A lot of people, when they're joining cloud security, when they're considering it as a career, this is a question they ask me and they're typically very really scared about it because they think coding is this very scary thing which they, they can't do it and you have to be very very technical about it you know coding has always been something that separates like the really technical people from the casual non-technical people in cyber security and there's nothing wrong with being non-technical there are many many jobs which you can do which are non-technical in cyber security but let me be clear right from the start coding is not a mandatory skill for cloud security uh, it's completely possible to have a great cloud security career without once touching code okay just to be very very clear but it is a massive advantage i'm not gonna say that no you don't need code no code. you don't need to know coding at all but coding can be a massive massive advantage in cloud security and i'll give you a few reasons why and why coding has helped me quite a lot in my career right and that's what i wanted to cover in today's uh talk uh before we move ahead please do like and subscribe to this channel i talk on a weekly basis about things like cloud security, AI, and you know, cyber security career advice. So if you're interested in any of these things, please do like and subscribe to this channel. So why, why is knowing coding a big advantage in cloud security? Now, first of all, understanding IAM, which is identity and access management, that becomes very, very easy. So in case you're not aware, IAM is pretty much the core of cloud security. A lot of people make this mistake. They think that IAM is just about creating users, creating a password policy, uh, setting down MFA, and then boom, you're done, right? You, you just like, clean your hands. This is all I need to know about IAM. No, if you are in, like, if you're serious about cloud security, if you want to control what a user can do, what a cloud workload can do, right? What a, what a server can do. If you want to control the blast radius of a developer, right? Maybe you've given somebody powerful permissions and you want to control and you want to stop him from doing a privilege escalation. Again, this is what IAM comes in. If you want to control third party access, which is one of the ways like people get compromised. If you want to enforce advanced security models like zero trust, again, this is where IAM comes in because this is where you will control all the API requests that are coming in. So IAM becomes easy. Why does it become easy if you know code? Because most of the time IAM policies, they're captured in JSON templates. JSON, if you're, uh, it's like a notation, like a element and key type format. And honestly, most of the time, most of the time, your problem goes in troubleshooting JSON policies because there's a lot of issues which coming, a lot of errors coming. And if you don't know a little bit of coding, it can become difficult. So again, IAM, if you're working in the cloud, you will need to know how to create and troubleshoot IAM policies. And coding makes that very easy. If you know a little bit of coding, you don't need to be an expert, but a little bit of coding will go a very, very long way in making you a good cloud security architect, a good cloud security engineer. And as you move up the ladder, then maybe you can not have to focus so much on coding. Okay, that was like the first point. Now, the second point is infrastructure as code. Now, infrastructure as code, if you're not aware, this is basically capturing your cloud infrastructure into coding templates. And infrastructure as code is a major, major part of the cloud. You can, nobody goes to the management console, to the graphical user interface, and this is where they use this is what they do to spin up like cloud infrastructure. No, most of the time it is captured, but in code, there are many, many advantages. They're capturing cloud infrastructure in templates like infrastructure as code, languages like Terraform and cloud formation. This is a best practice. And the problem is if you're capturing it here, this is where the security weaknesses will also be there. And if you know code, you will know how to read Terraform templates, cloud infrastructure templates. Right, and you'll be able to pick it up. A lot of people tell me, no, I can just use a scanner. I can buy something. I can run a scanner. Absolutely, do that. You can buy a commercial or an open source tool to scan these templates for weaknesses without like knowing too much about coding. However, what will happen is if people challenge those findings, then you won't know how to respond because you don't know how to read the code. 
and understand whether it is a false positive or a false negative, right? And I, I've seen that developers and cloud security, like not cloud security, uh, the cloud teams, they become very frustrated if the cloud security people are not able to understand why like uh, the template is, uh, why there is a false positive and they just insist on blindly following the tool, right? So infrastructure as code is a very, very key skill within the cloud and knowing coding, again, it helps you out quite a bit. So that is another advantage. So the first one was IAM policies. The second one is knowing infrastructure as code. Both of these things become easy if you know how to code. The third part is, and very, very important, especially if you work in cloud security, that is serverless, serverless functions. Serverless functions are things like Lambda, Azure functions, which help you create small, small functions, which you can use to automate your security, uh, cloud security posture, incident response within the cloud. So serverless, you don't need a server, you don't need databases like the name implies. You can just write code and that can be automatically, uh, what do you call, executed in response to something. And you don't have to worry about anything. It's like a complete abstraction, no servers, no nothing to worry about. And this is a very, very powerful model for security incident response, right? Because then like if somebody uh, creates a server, exposes it publicly, your serverless function will kick in and it will fix that issue before there is a security response. And knowing serverless is a very, very powerful skill within the cloud, especially you want to automate all your cloud security. You want to automate as much of the functions as possible. You can buy commercial security solutions, but I can almost guarantee there will always be use cases where you need to know a little bit of coding to do serverless because they might be custom use cases which will not get covered by any commercial solution. So a little bit of serverless will help you massively within the cloud. And the last part is uh, API. The, now the cloud is pretty much API, right? Basically everything you do in the cloud, it is an API call, whether you're doing it from the command line, whether you're doing it from code, whether you're doing it from the graphical user interface, there is an API which is being manually or automatically called. And it doesn't matter what you're doing, but there will be a, uh, API call behind it. To mature your cloud environment, you need to make like different services talk to each other through APIs. And this can be very important for incident response, right? Where different services need to talk to each other and you need to make that automation happen. Coding, knowing coding, knowing how APIs work, the request and response, right? This is again, a little bit of coding will help you out massively. Uh, especially in a cloud environment, you can have public APIs which are insecure and it, that can open up a channel for attackers to take advantage of. APIs are pretty much like behind the hood, everything is API within the cloud. That's why, and to understand those APIs, you need to know a little bit of coding. So these were the four reasons I would say, you need to know a little bit of coding. You don't need to be an expert. You do not need to be a massive like coding geek to have that expertise within cloud security. But like I said, know a little bit of coding. Now, what's the good news? Uh, the good news is now, Learning cloud nowadays, it becomes so easy because of AI. AI powered cloud coding assistance. Like I'm working AWS, we use QDeveloper, which is an absolute amazing tool. You can check it out. There's a completely free tier. I'm not advertising, but I'm just saying, you can literally tell it to do, write a few code and it will generate it. Sometimes people use ChatGPT. I'm not saying that all of those tools are going to replace, but they do make the concept of writing code very, very easy. You can even put code within chat GPT and like ask it to explain it and it will actually go and explain that code, how it's happening. So I hope definitely you should leverage AI in this time and use it to help you learn a little bit of coding. And I hope this will help you to demystify and make it clear why coding is a great skill to have for cloud security professionals. You do, It's not mandatory, but simply put, there is no disadvantage to not knowing how to code. If you want to be like a good cloud security professional, it will give you a big advantage over others. And understanding the underlying code will help you apply more issues for IAM, for Terraforms, for serverless, for API. And it, there are so many good resources available out there. And in the age of AI, there really is no reason not to know a little bit of coding. So that was pretty much it. I hope this gave you a good idea. Please do like and subscribe to this channel also and like share this video if you found it useful. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next lesson.